university lecturers to strike across the country. Anger at proposed Southampton fuel plant. Auto population on the rise. And in sports, Winchester City hosts Pool Town in top of the table clash. Hello and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Judy Cordier. Students across the country are having their lectures cancelled tomorrow as university and college staff strike over cuts to their pensions. The university and college union says that up to 30% of the pension funds could go and fear the knock-on effect might damage student education. Andrew Giddings reports. Lecturers at the University of Southampton are gathering support for their protests by telling staff and students about the effect that they say pension cuts will have on further and higher education. Professor Catherine Pope lectures here and sits on the UCU's Executive Committee. It's a personal issue for me because I have a final salary pension and I will lose money from that pension, which basically is like somebody taking money out of your wages. So I feel quite passionately about that from a personal point of view for my family. But I'm more concerned about the effect that it will have on new entrants to the profession. Professor Pope says that new lecturers could be as much as £350,000 worse off under the proposals and the UCU says the damage will go beyond the pockets of staff. For long-term interest of students, we need staff who are the brightest and best teaching in our universities. And the way that you ensure that happens is by having good pensions. The idea that messing with pensions is good for long-term health of our higher education sector is a nonsense. But in Winchester, this strike comes alongside whispers of another strike over redundancies. The president of Winchester's student union has said that there is a limit to the support students will give to industrial action. When we marched in London, when we marched in Winchester, students and lecturers marched side by side then. Um, so I think that's why it's important for us to support them on Thursday, to show solidarity. But as a student union, we're here to represent and look after the needs of students. So if it did get to an extent where their education, which is our priority, is going to be affected, then we would come in and defend that. Winchester's UCU representative says he will not comment, and until tomorrow, no one will really know just how disruptive or effective the strikes will be. Plans to build a new fuel station in Southampton have been met with outrage by local residents. Protesters are lobbying Helios, the company in charge of the biomass development, to give up the plan. Kieran Brannigan has been down to speak to them. Hundreds of people in Southampton are against plans for a new biomass plant to be built in the city centre. Plans for the controversial new plant, which burns wood to produce energy, have been the subject of protests by concerned residents. To take away a landscape that we've got and, and put something else in its place, to me, seems completely unfair. And I don't know how they can think that that's anything that we're going to look upon positively. I really don't think they understand what people of Southampton actually want. We don't want this. We don't want it on our doorstep. We don't want it on the gateway to our city, and we'll never be proud of it. This is the area which will be transformed into the new biomass plant by Helios. Currently used for car storage, it is only 125 metres from the nearest homes. The company have hosted exhibitions for local people in an attempt to calm fears over pollution and the visual impact of the site. Understandable concerns about uh, traffic movements and impact of the plant on air quality, visual impact, uh, noise uh, issues and so on, but we have addressed all of those through very detailed environmental studies as part of the ongoing work. In a statement to Winnell, Southampton City Council said they would not support the plans in their current format. However, the final decision will be made by the Infrastructure Planning Commission later this year. Kieran Brannigan, Winchester News Online. Japanese communities are still paying tribute to their people in their homeland after the devastating effects of the earthquake. Tanoshi Restaurant in Winchester held its own charity evening to aid the cause and raise money for the Japanese tsunami appeal. Hannah Keegan was at the event. The effects of the Japanese tsunami have been felt worldwide. Here in Winchester, Tanoshi Restaurant hosted a charity fundraiser to help those affected. The event included a three-course meal and traditional Japanese singing. Those involved were pleased with the support from the community and the successful outcome of the evening. 
It's really become the energy of two members of uh, staff, really. So it's Anita, the manager here, and uh, I, one of the Japanese waitresses. They felt very, very isolated away from the, uh, the country, and they wanted to do something to help. So it's really been a lot of effort by them over a short period of time to get the, uh, the night ready. We feel like really helpless that we are still being fine here. We try to take action. That's what we are doing right now. Hannah Keegan, Winchester News Online. Yet more bad news for the pub industry, as more local independent companies are facing closure. While local pubs have often been the cornerstone of a community, more and more inns across Hampshire are finding it impossible to survive. David Champion has more. The Cricketers in Winchester has closed its doors for the last time this week due to the spiralling costs of stock and rent. Pat and Lynn Chester's returned to England in the hope of opening a successful pub after spending 20 years in Australia and New Zealand. So we know we can't afford we can't afford to buy any stock. So as soon as you get to that position, if you haven't got enough money to buy stock, you can't run the business. So we had to close yesterday. <laughs> you just can't possibly do it. The, the the net result is that on an average week at the moment we actually lose a thousand pounds and we don't take any income. We've put 30,000 of our own money in, which is now gone, which is something we just can't put any more in. The Cricketers is not the only pub affected, though. The Heart in Hand in Bar End has been acquired for housing. The site of the New Queen's Head has also been earmarked for development, and the site of what was the Stanmore Inn is now being developed as a care home. So, it looks like it might be last orders for many more pubs in Winchester. David Champion. Winchester News Online. And now we go over to Gareth with your weekly sports. What have you got for us, Gareth, today? Thanks a lot, Julie. Well, this season the Wessex League has been competed for between Winchester City and Paul Town. And on Saturday the two teams met in a promotion six-pointer. I went down to the Den Plan. Winchester City started Saturday's top of the table clash seven points above their weekend opponents, Paul Town. It was in the second half when the first clear-cut chance became obvious and Paul came agonisingly close to taking the lead. Town kept pressing and took a deserved lead, a long ball into the box eventually finding the head of the unfortunate Lee Mills. Carl Preston was a four in City side all afternoon and his persistency gave Paul a chance at doubling their advantage as he was bundled over by Conor McCarthy in the box. Michael Hubbard stepped up, sending Rory Anderson the wrong way. Yeah! Preston again found space behind the Winchester backline and was yet again fouled. This time Anderson was suspect and may be lucky to only escape with a yellow card. Hubbard on board to double his tally for the game, but Anderson more than made up for his original error. This wasn't the end of the scoring though. A scrappy build-up, but a deserved third for the away side. Substitute Thomas Jeffs on hand to seal the points. Paul's win puts pressure on City in the running to the end of the season. Gareth Messenger, Winchester News Online. Now let's take a look at other league results from the weekend. In the Blue Square South, Eastley's playoff charge was dealt a huge blow at home to Welling United on Saturday as they lost 4-1. Basingstoke Town failed to build on their three-match unbeaten run as they went down away to Boreham Wood. And in the Zamoreto South and West League, AFC Totten continued their impressive form as they came away from Thatcham Town with all three points and Thaniel Sherborne with a double for the Stags as they remained top of the table. And now on to university sport. The University of Winchester men's football first won their final game of the season as they had to take maximum points from their last two games. The university waits for other results to decide their league fate. And some of the university's finest players were in action on Sunday as they played in a charity game to raise money for comic relief. Chess FC versus a World Eleven was played at Basingstoke's ground, the Camrose, and raised over £200 at the event. Former Winchester student Ben Clark got the pick of the goals and organiser Ray Barry also got on the, on the score sheet. The game ended 7-3 to Chess FC. 
Now, with the Olympics in London next year, Winchester students have been given the opportunity to experience the stadium firsthand. Jay Gable has more. Winchester University athletics team are set to compete at the 2012 Olympic Stadium in London next year as part of the nationwide sporting competition known as the Bucks Championship. Wow, it feels like amazing like to be competing in the Olympic Stadium. Like it's an incredible experience and like we all feel really honored to have the chance to compete there. The whole team's obviously quite nervous but just absolutely amazed and I think we feel quite privileged to have the opportunity. The competition which Winchester entered in 2010 will be held at the stadium shortly after next summer's games. Bucks, British University College Sports will call on all of Winchester's athletic squad and features a range of events from the 100 metres to the shot put. I'm really excited about the Olympics in general. Like, I think it's an amazing opportunity, especially to have it held in our country. Like, it's fantastic. It's actually really closely linked to Winchester because we've got the people, some of the um, athletes are competing at our track where we train. So not only is that like, it's a real honour, like we're training at the same track as what some of the Olympics will be. So to say that we've trained there and then we're going to actually compete at the Olympic Stadium, it's, we're, we're really lucky, really excited about it. And that's all your sport for this week. Back to you, Julie. Thanks, Gareth. And finally, some furry faces have recently been spotted in the area as otters have been making a longer way to come back. Carol Aithwaite went out to meet Winchester's newest residents. This used to be a familiar sight in Britain as the otter populated much of the great British countryside, an animal that is featured in classic English literature as well as being a welcome inhabitant to our riverbanks. Yet in recent years, the river otter has been driven almost to extinction, disappearing in numerous English counties and sometimes never returning which is why in this idyllic Winchester Mill House, staff and locals are delighted with their new family. Um, they come through the mill almost every day, roughly every day and a half. Um, this time of year, the mother tends to be around quite a lot with her, her cubs. Although numbers are still low, enthusiasts are not giving up hope for the otter, with Winchester being a perfect example of how, here at least, things are going swimmingly. Cara Lathwaite for Winchester News Online. That's all for this week, but for more award-winning news and sports, make sure to log on to our, our website at winall.co.uk. But from all of us here, goodbye.